Until recently, if you wanted to make a screencast demonstration of a piece of software or of a website, you probably did that on a Windows PC. That's because the large number of business users on Windows have created a strong demand for integrated screencast applications. What you might not know is that you can combine a few free and cheap applications on your own to create really sophisticated screencasts on your Mac. Now before you start, it's a good idea to go ahead and get yourself an account on YouTube. And you've probably seen YouTube around the web. You've probably seen the Time Magazine article about them recently. And I've got three really good reasons to align yourself with YouTube when you start creating some videos. First, YouTube provides a great player. It's built on Flash technology. You've seen the Flash player with this little play button bar right here all over the web. And it's become ubiquitous because it works really well. Anybody on just about any web browser is going to be able to play your video if you put it into one of YouTube's players. So if you create your video in a format like QuickTime or Windows Media, some of your users might run into problems. But YouTube is pretty much universal. Now second, video files can be huge. That means they're really expensive to host and they can put a lot of strain on your web server. If you don't have a lot of funds, YouTube is a great way to get professional quality video hosting without running up a huge bill. And third and most important, YouTube offers you a built-in network to help you reach more viewers. If you host a video on your own website, you still have to drive traffic to that site to get people to see it. Now by using YouTube and using the right keywords, and they call them tags right here on every video, there's a set of tags, okay? Pick the right ones and you're going to start to attract the right kind of audience, exactly the folks that you want to see your video, and that will start to happen automatically. Now while many folks think that YouTube is kind of like America's Funniest Home Videos, you know, goofy stuff like the Family Survival Kit and Will It Blend, um, really it's becoming a fantastic way for businesses to reach folks. These Will It Blend videos are a great example. You know, they're goofy and fun, but they're really getting the message out about a particular brand of blender and how effective that is. And it's really raising the awareness for a company that would otherwise have no business advertising on TV or on the radio. Those YouTube videos are out, people are talking about them, and they really get attention. Now, you don't have to go to the extreme that those guys have done. You can actually create something that's a little more sedate, and as long as it's right for your audience, you'll start to attract an audience because inherently, YouTube video folks like to hit this little share button. And the share button does a couple of things when you click on it. It will actually let folks embed the video into their own site, or it will actually let them share the video by email and alert other users to how to actually connect to these YouTube pages. So for instance, when I clicked share, this little screen popped up that's allowing me to email this video to other people, whether or not they're YouTube users or not. So that is a great built-in viral marketing function that's available inside every single YouTube video. It's really fantastic stuff. So as much as YouTube was originally built around folks sharing little videos with each other, companies and businesses and especially small businesses are discovering that this is a really effective way and an inexpensive way to reach out to audiences and it's not intrusive you know you are reaching the folks that are choosing to watch your video so as opposed to a commercial that's interruptive and might reach folks that don't really care about you the folks watching your video are clicking on it because they are interested in something in it a little bit later on I'll show you how to write some copy that gets folks interested in looking at some of your videos now the most important thing when you get your YouTube account set up, and you can do that by following this little sign up button right here in the upper right hand of each page. Okay? You're going to use this join YouTube function right here. And 
after you go into the join YouTube account and let's follow this along so I'm going to sign up as director at apple of my eye dot com and I'll create a username for myself and we'll select the password and we'll enter our country and our postal code and it's safe to give your own date of birth here what they're really doing is making sure that you are actually a legal adult and the only effect is on your director page that you're going to um, sometimes get a little birthday notification or things like that the other important thing this verifies that you're a real person is this little verification image right here it's deliberately kind of tough that keeps spammers from flooding the system with awful videos and we're just going to fill in what's right here now the most important thing when you set up your company's YouTube account is to sign up as a director you get some important benefits by registering this way first you're telling YouTube that you own the copyright to the videos that you're uploading to the service and that means you'll get a special designation and the opportunity to place your company logo on the YouTube pages where your video appears second a director account means that you can upload videos of any length as long as you don't reach the maximum file size of a hundred megabytes this is really important if you want to place longer presentations on a site without having to split your video up into smaller chunks it can sometimes be hard to get business viewers to move from video to video in sequence so that director accounts larger video length lets you keep everything in one window finally director videos get a little extra attention and promotion throughout the YouTube site director videos appear in a highlighted placement area and sometimes they're matched up to videos with similar keywords or content now to actually sign up as a director you're gonna to have to do something pretty interesting they don't want to make these accounts just obvious and available to everybody you have to do a little homework so to do this you're actually going to go up to your address bar there's no link for this in your account profile page just highlight out the end of that URL and go to youtube.com slash director and that's gonna bring you to this page right here where you can register as a director and all you have to do here is enter in all of the information as what they call the contracting party and what this means is you're going to actually put down your company name right here the name the title that you have at your company your website URL you're also going to put down your phone your street address all the other contact information that's important to establish that you're a real person with a company that wants to use the service as a director they're also going to ask you a couple questions here like how many hours do you already have ready to go how many individual titles do you have and give them a very brief but accurate and really detailed description of your video content so in this case if you were a software developer and you wanted to use it to demo your software tell them I publish videos that demonstrate the software that we produce or I'm uploading videos from the trade shows that we're at and that's going to let the human being at YouTube that's going to review your account know what it is that they can expect and that will help them approve it the real thing that's happening right now is that folks trying to bootleg TV shows into YouTube trying to sign up for director accounts so they can get past the restriction of 10 minutes per upload and that, like I said earlier that's the biggest benefit of having a director account right now is that you can go beyond 10 minutes so certainly there are a lot of folks trying to get around that if you are a real company and the description that you're providing matches what's on your company website then you're gonna be in good shape okay now 
take a look at the director agreement down here it's very similar to their standard terms and conditions it's just a little more stringent because you again are agreeing in this case that you have control over every single thing that you've got this clause right here is the most important and if you want to have a YouTube account to kind of mess around with and upload a bunch of other stuff create a separate account for yourself one that's different from the YouTube account that you're gonna have for your company because if you happen to upload something that you don't control into that company account a an editor is going to look at that and potentially suspend your entire account maybe even suspend your company from access to the director program so make sure that you're really separating your work and your play when you're signing up for that YouTube account. Once you've read that agreement, head all the way to the bottom. You're going to put in your digital signature and submit your application using this button right here. So once you've gone ahead and signed up for your account as a YouTube director, it's going to take about two, three, maybe even four business days for them to get back to you. They are working as hard as they can. Uh, there's no contact information there, so you're just going to have to be patient. This is why it's important to plan ahead and get that application in before you start producing your video. But once you have that application into them, it's time to go shopping for some of the applications that will help you create some great screencasts. Now, if you purchased a Mac in the last year or so, you should already have iMovie down here in your dock and if not it's in your applications folder it's part of the iLife suite of tools that's been bundled with all new Macs for about the last year or so if you don't have it you can purchase iLife easily from any Apple store or from Apple's online store now the next thing on your list is QuickTime Pro and you may think that you've actually got this already on your system you definitely have the QuickTime player on your Mac but you may not have the Pro features activated and there's a huge distinction QuickTime Basic allows you to play pretty much anything uh, QuickTime Pro has a lot of really important features that are going to make it easier for you to make your screencasts for instance, even though I usually prefer to edit in iMovie's rich interface, there are some times when you're just going to want to make a few simple cuts to your screencast. QuickTime Pro lets you do that very easily, and it also includes a set of converters and codecs that you're going to need to produce files that look really clear without taking up a lot of space. You can purchase QuickTime Pro for $29 just by heading up here and registering it and opting for the pro registration it'll take you over to a secure web page where you can take care of that and get a registration key for QuickTime Pro now to actually record what's happening on your computer screen you're gonna need a screen capture program and the one that I prefer to use is one called I show you and it's spelled lowercase i big s little h little o little w big u and it's from the folks at a company called shiny white box and this is a fantastic program there are a few other screen capture tools on the market like snaps pro or screen record or display eater I show you is not only one of the least expensive tools in its class I think it's also the best and you can purchase it for just twenty dollars from shinywhitebox.com now next you're going to want to add a free application that tidies or obscures your desktop when you're recording a screencast. You notice here that I have what looks like a very bland desktop. And the reason for that is I'm using this little tool right up here in the corner called DoDim. And you see when I click on this in my menu bar, I have a lot of options. I can go full black, I can go darker, or I can go dark. And what that means, I can even turn dimming off, is that I'm actually obscuring whatever's on my desktop now uncharacteristically I don't have a lot on there today but if you're like me on a normal day and you've got lots of different stuff going on on your desktop you don't want everybody to see the names of files that are sitting out there or little applications or other things that are sitting there this little application is really good 
at keeping everything else a secret. The other thing that's important is if you're creating a screencast that's part of a paid product that you're creating, let's say you're doing an info product and you're going to be selling that, you don't want to accidentally put something on your desktop that you don't own the rights to and include that in something for sale. That could include a photo that you're using as a desktop or a screensaver. That could include a screenshot of another application that you're reviewing or that's out there. So Doodim is really good at hiding everything else that's on your desktop. It's available from the folks at LaChauseInteractive.net. Best news of all, it's free. Next on our shopping list, we want to pick up two applications that allow us to illustrate and highlight what's going on with our demo. Now the first application I want to shine a spotlight on is one that you've already seen me using and it's called Mouse Pose. This is a really simple tool. This is a really simple tool that does a couple things really well. When you hit a special hotkey, it actually creates this little spotlight effect, which is really nice when you're doing a screencast. The other thing that it does is animates where you're clicking on the screen with that little red dot you see right there. So this is a really nice application. It's available from boinks.com and it's only $14.95, which is really, really nice. It's a really Mac style, classy way, easy way to let viewers follow the action. Now finally, I'm also going to use another very popular application in kind of an unintended way. If you've ever seen the great application Voodoo Pad, which a lot of folks use, there's a companion piece called Fly Sketch, and I actually use it like a telestrator. The telestrator being that little device that John Madden loves. So if you ever watch John Madden calling sports, you see, you know, here and now we're going to make an arrow and here's a little guy, you know. So you can actually use Fly Sketch for this. And it is a great little tool. It's available for just 24.95 and it's nice to contrast to the effect from Mouse Pose because you can actually create connections between things on the screen. You can leave things up for a little bit longer. And it requires just a little bit of dexterity on your part. You're going to have to go down into the dock here and activate it and deactivate it from time to time. So if you notice me dip down here and hide this, that means that I want to get rid of what's there. Or I can show it, bring it back, and use the little eraser key right up in the corner here. What I've done is I've launched Fly Sketch. It will stay in a window on its own and you can just simply control the opacity and it sits on top of whatever else is open on your screen. It's actually designed to grab static screenshots that you can then annotate but I'm using it here like a telestrator just by using the highlight tool and I've changed the highlight tool to be in red so I can erase what's here and create more stuff it's very very easy and all I have to do is toggle it on and off using my dock and that's another great way that you can add another dimension to your screencasts it's a cheap, it's an effective tool. It's available for $24.95 from the folks at Flying Meat. So, so far, we've spent just $88.90 souping up a regular Mac to handle screencasts. And considering that the leading Windows app starts at $299, it's still a bargain. Now, here are a few more things to keep in mind when you're making your screencasts. First, remember to write out your notes so that you sound professional. You can still improvise along the way, but you're going to look and sound so much better if you know what you want to get across during your presentation. Second, don't be afraid to edit. Use retakes and close-ups when necessary, and you can use simple cut edits in QuickTime Pro to tighten up your presentation. And third, keep it simple. Animations don't always come across all that well in screencasts, so avoid using fancy transitions or special effects that could peg you as an amateur. Even professional video directors usually stick to cuts and dissolves. When it's time to record your screencast, use these tips to make it look and sound great. 
First, try to record your screencast in a quiet room without much ambient noise. It's a good idea to position yourself away from air ducts or noisy pieces of equipment. An integrated headset with noise-canceling microphone is a great investment if you plan on doing a lot of screencasts. Otherwise, the built-in microphone on your MacBook or your iMac should be plenty good for a basic recording. Finally, disable any applications that might interrupt you, especially email notifiers or system status monitors. Nothing can ruin your screencast like a pop-up window full of nasty spam. Whether you edit your screencast in QuickTime Pro or in iMovie, the last step is the same getting your video into YouTube, and it's a very simple process. From anywhere on the YouTube site, go ahead and click the My Account button. That brings you to your My Account page. And from there, click on the Upload New Video button right here. That's going to bring you to the page that you need to be able to submit your video to YouTube. Now before you log on to submit your video, you've got two last pieces of homework. It's much easier to take care of these offline before you log into YouTube than to try and do them in the moment. First, you want to write a solid description of your screencast using the kinds of words that your desired audience might naturally be searching for on YouTube. Those are going to go right here in the description box. And for instance, if your presentation is about a new productivity application for the Mac, write about how it might work for people who are already using other systems like Outlook, Entourage, Daylight, or even getting things done. Proofread your description for grammar and spelling and make sure it's not in all caps. And in the same way, create a list of 10 to 15 keyword tags. Those will help YouTube viewers surf to your video from similar videos. Now this is probably the most important way to add passive promotion to your video. For a productivity application, you might try email, exchange, outlook, mail, GTD, productivity, and even how to. How to is very important too. It's something that's kind of a code word among folks that watch a lot of videos and surf the web on blogs a whole lot. How to all one word has become a great tag to find out how to do things. Now make sure you give your video a compelling title and find the right video category. If you're talking about new technology or new software for the Mac, science and technology is a great place to go. And when you're ready, go upload a file. We'll take you to the screen that will get you the opportunity to put your file up to 100 megabytes into the system. Now remember, if you've signed up to be a director on YouTube, you can put more than 10 minutes into the YouTube servers. However, your file still cannot be larger than 100 megabytes. When it's time to upload your video, make sure you do it from a location where you can have access to a fast, reliable broadband connection for a good amount of time. On a typical home cable modem, it might take three to five minutes to upload a single minute of your video. And if you're uploading a 10 minute video to YouTube, plan to spend at least an hour uploading. Make sure your computer's not going to go into sleep mode while you're uploading, or you could be in for a frustrating experience. And if you're uploading from a public place like a Wi-Fi hotspot, make sure the system does not require you to re-authenticate yourself or you'll break your upload. After you get the message from YouTube that your video has been uploaded, be patient. Depending on who else is uploading video at the moment, it could take anywhere from a few hours to a whole day for your video to be ready to go. And once it's ready, navigate to your director page on YouTube. Click on the link for the video that you would like to share. Once it's ready, navigate to your video page. Right over here on the right hand side, you'll be able to grab the code that you can use to embed this video on your own website, as well as share it with others. And now, you've got a video that you can use to promote your software, your website, or your business.